Hello and welcome back to another Top Table Duels. So today we're looking at a best of three ranked match between Sprite and it's going to be Runic Naturia. So Red is going to be playing Runic Naturia ARS1 coming in at 695 and the Witness in Blue at 505 playing our Sprite engine. I'm really liking the look of Runic Naturia, uh, especially when it comes to things that uh, being able to really kind of shut down the, the Bestial engine doesn't do too, too much against them. And that recursion always works really well uh, and being able to sit and wait to really can go into something. I think uh, this deck is, is fairly good. I, I don't think it gets represented enough to always take those top spots. Obviously Sprite being way overrepresented and is always gonna be uh, going in those top spots. Without that, further ado let's go ahead and kick off this one so red's obviously gonna be starting us off trying to curses most common starter play obviously that's probably gonna get yep yeah, impermed gonna go for the quick play Naturia blessing gonna go for special summon mill five and he hits the angler, uh, so automatically he's gonna probably get himself uh, two off there. Looks like we've also got ourselves a, a Keldo. Um, man, I'm, I don't know, uh, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the the Shizu engine. At this point, I think after Mama came out, I'm getting a little bit sick of their capabilities. Obviously, bouncing, milling, quick play returning. Uh, let me know what you all think if if maybe on the next ban list. The Ishizu uh, cards probably need to get stripped down limited a little bit like we saw uh, over in the OCG. So he's going to resolve the first one. He's going to resolve his Kelbeck because I think he's just digging for more trees at this point. Um, but of course we're going to see... We're going to see two beavers come out. And then obviously I think we're going to see another beaver come out. And Red gets both of his trees. So he's going to be able to dig into all three of his Nature Blessings. Sadly, it's only once per turn if I'm, if I'm losing right. Yeah, activate one of these effects. Um, no, it is not. That is not a once per turn. That is actually uh, that's actually pretty good. I don't know why I thought that was once per turn. All right, so he's going to get his third beaver out here. Digging through his whole beaver engine. Little, be little nimble beaver family here. And all three Nature Blessings. Let me know uh, down below if you've ever seen all three and three like that in the game before. So he's going to return them all as he goes into Naturia because he's going to send another one. Four activations in one turn. I'm not sure. Yeah, so he's going to go for his Cricket. Cricket, by far, I mean, the, both those quick effects... Get two if your opponent has it with the highest attack. Being able to get uh, toolbox into anything and then summoning itself on a summon and then being able to summon it again if you need to off of uh, Camellia. Just that level of recursion play and since they're both Earth, not being able to do anything about it. So he goes into his Baron de Fleur, a very common play, going through Coral Dragon, uh, having your rank six, uh, being able to discard, pop, you also see it in the other uh, Synchro 6 that draws on summon. Uh, just very consistent ways of kind of recurring maybe some of that loss. And then in this instance getting to an instruction. So he's taking out two of his beavers. Uh, Alright, so he's sitting on two effect negates and a omni negate, a blessing, and a runic uh, slummer. Obviously, he wasn't able to get into his field spell, which is definitely gonna uh, definitely gonna hurt him quite a bit in this game. So we get one uh, Saronir on deck. He lets it go through. He's not not super worried. Okay, there he goes. Because he's got the stink bug, so he's not super worried about getting run over. Um, stink bun again. Also, just being it's just cards that were printed so long ago. Never had the ability to see competitive play, uh, as far as I know, uh, and now just being able to be able to spam things like Naturia Stink Bug to kind of give your opponent that same runic treatment that they can't do anything. So opponent's going to link off here. He's going to get into a Cerebus. Okay, 
gonna discard out. He's got to get rid of Sunflower. I'm not sure why we didn't negate on Sunflower. Okay, so he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to waste it because he's worried about what's yeah potentially coming. It's blue. First free negate. Using the mill, probably. Yep, there we go. He ties to it and then he negates again. He's also, I think he's still sitting on his all negate. Yep, so he's gonna wrap that up. I, I don't think there's any, I don't think he played that poorly. I don't think there's anything he can really do about it. Gonna have him the chance to go first. Alright, so it starts off with his beaver. Easy play to get himself into, into Sprine. Gonna probably send another nimble angler. To get him his next two. Thin the deck, clear it out. Opponent's not sending on any way to interrupt. So this is going to be foolish combo. Yep. Bounce himself to hand. There we go. So he's only play it looks like he's only playing two. I don't know if the witness is playing uh, dupe, but if you don't know, you should be playing dupe. Obviously he's gonna get his toad. This is one. It's interesting that he left the Bistial in. I'm wondering how much of his Bistial engine he left in, looking, uh, staring down Naturia, knowing that ultimately it's not going to get you what you want. Cool. Alright, so he's going to let that go through. He's going to negate. Uh, so he's going to negate the destruction, and take it off of him. Obviously, get your beaver back. And then he's going to go for the other backer of the imperm. And he's likely going to float into a camilla and then the sunflower. Yep. Of course. He's a way to set this up. Get himself another quick play. And again, yet yeah, we're seeing here is he's been shut off from his ability to... Uh, get into his field spell. I don't know if there's a reason why he couldn't have... Oh, no, okay. Activate one of these. You can only activate one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he already activated his tip, so he's not able to get into his field spell. Let me know in the comments below what you uh, if you think Bistials is a good thing to keep sided in. I know they obviously they offer pressure. Uh, if you think it's, it's the good side to keep in. All right, so he's gonna break off the runic flashing fire. So giving up his battle phase. Uh, him losing his stink bug. I don't know how many stink bugs they play. I, if I had to guess, they only play one Naturia stink bug. So he lost his one Naturia stink bug. So he's not gonna be safe from battle from here on out. Going into his Sprite Blue. This, uh, I don't, um, okay. So he lets Sprite Blue go through. He's probably going to grab Red or Jet. Okay, yeah, he grabs Jet. Because uh, he's going to need to, If because uh, I'm assuming he thinks he's probably going to lose some of this. Because he can't go into Battle Phase to get rid of either one of these two. So he's going to be staring down uh, a double negate at this point. Opponent's going to probably send Tree, get another quick play, uh, Naturia Blessing set up. Uh, just so he has an ability to continue going off next turn. Yep, another blessing. At this point, he still has quite a bit on board. I'm not sure. Yep, Soul Sweeper. I'm not really sure. Okay, so he's in the, so I guess he's going to save me. Would you save that? I guess you just save that play for the... Thinking that the, he might go back into another sprite. But, uh, sorry, uh, gigantic. But I, I'm not really sure what he gains off of that. Uh, so, yeah, I guess the smart play. Uh, the witness played it right. Wait till they go into an XE. You know they're going to do it. Obviously, take out the jet. You want to turn off uh, starter uh, or their ability um, to get smashers. Still gets it, anyways. Can't do that double negate. And his opponent is sitting. Sitting on one, two, three, three potentially no red. So uh, four, three, sorry, three interrupts. One, two, three, four. Yeah, potentially four interrupts. 
uh, going into this next turn. Oh, sorry, and a Druus Worm off of the IP if he if he goes into it. So five interrupts. That's a lot. Let's that go off. His IP doesn't need to doesn't need to do too much. It's interesting he didn't. Oh no, he did attempt to chain. Yeah. No, he didn't. He didn't declare effect. So it's interesting he didn't chain there. Did I miss it? I don't know if he missed it. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know why he maybe didn't go into spread up. Let me know if I missed something on that one. Goes into Eternity Beast. He knows his opponent got the Smashers, and obviously he doesn't know what's sitting down there. I don't know if Naturia Beast was the best. I, I guess no, yeah, Naturia Beast is, is probably his it's probably what he has to go into there because he doesn't want his opponent to because Smashers can really disrupt what he's going for here. Getting rid of his one sunflower that he currently has in there. I think I think they only play one, if not two, uh, because the cards are fairly bricky. So I think, yeah, one, the one sunflower. So if he loses one sunflower, it turns off his entire play. Gets Baylor. Of course, we, we all know this coming. He's not, he's not chewing through these interrupts fast enough. Okay. Effect activates. Okay, so so he says, a thinking on res. Okay, so he waits till resolution of access code talker. I'm guessing he targeted unicorn. I'm not seeing it on there. So targets unicorn. He's 5300. After resolution, he goes into Druus Worm, and of course he's going to Medora. He does not want Druus Worm coming down. That's smart. And then. The infinite impermanence is, I guess, in an open game state. So, now you have an access code, can't do anything. He still has to out Naturia Beast, but that's fairly easy when you're looking down an Happy Pass Grant. And there's the Runic Fountain, finally gets it so late in the game. Go on, fast forward this, okay. He's gonna go into one more, he's got none of his Ashizu cards. He hasn't seen hardly any of his Ashizu engine after that last game where he milled everything on one go. Tips grab Cricket. Obviously, he's going to pull out Toad. Cricket's not going to get much. It's very clearly going to be met by Negate. Yep. And that's the writing on the wall. There's no coming back from this. Yep, that's too much engine. Too fast. I don't. I, if I'm ARS, I'm, I've already scooped up. I've gone to the next game. Yeah, you know, you know, your opponent's gonna. Yeah. Why? It's good. Good on a, ARS one. If, if you're watching, it's good on you for for continuing pushing through. But that game was effective. Ever. So it gets tip out. Uh, but I think, yeah, looking at game three, we're staring down infinite impermanence and the Cypher from Gamma. If I got to make a bet, uh, he is not getting his field sales for a try. Yeah, so uh, Hugin or Huggin is not. Let me know in the comments below how you say that. I say Huggin. Give me, give me the Huggins. Not going to get that off. Doesn't get the luck of the cards on this one. Hard the cards isn't with him. Does not get any of his nimble uh, drops on here. Uh, there's one of our fountains. I think they only play two. So one one already down. Uh, so at this point, he can go into the... Uh, he can go into the fox? No. He's, yeah, so he's, he, if he had to do anything, he's going to have to sink her off to go into fox. I think that maybe was what his play is going to be to get his fields filled back to get the engine online. But he's met with a gamma. Yeah. He, nothing he can do. He can't get uh, he can't hug, get hugged off the board, so he can't go. I forget the, the fox's name, uh, the one that looks like a wolf or a fox, so he can pull it out of the grave. Uh, at this point, he's got his one uh, stop destruction, got one effect negate, and he has one um, destruction. So his opponent, however, is not sitting on. So he says he has no targets, bruh. 
so we have one. So I mean, I don't know why he says he has no targets, acting like it was a big, like acting like he's confused. It looks like he, the only he left his magnumuts in. He, I guess he forgot he sided out any of his um, Jurusworms or Sarnirs. So at this point, yeah, you let this go. You know, carrots coming down. So he special that gets the sprite. Probably gonna go for. Probably gonna attempt to do starter, but he's gonna negate effects. But the moment he does that, actually. Yeah, okay. So he goes to the elf. What are we looking at for best elf target here? I guess red? Yeah, red. red's gonna be your best play there. Turn cricket off. Yeah, that's the writing in the game. He's got engine online. You have nothing. Eris won. I'm, I'm calling out. He's, he's already lost it. This has been a long game. It's been good. Lots, lots of good back and forth. I'm just gonna fast forward that angler. Yeah, he's turned on. He's turned on combo. He's going in. All right, he's got his one. I wouldn't be surprised if he was like, hey, wait a minute. Let me. Yeah, let me chain into my red. Yep. Just ditch Sprite out. Okay. okay. No, I stand corrected. This deck could go. Alright, so he's, uh, he's got his fountain online. So he goes here into. Ying. <laughs> so he finally gets his fountain online, has no runics to even, uh, has no runics to do anything about it. I know that kind of fast forwarded there. Elf goes into blue, blue pops off. He gets to special summon out his mole because there's a summon, goes into his double negate. But at this point, uh, he there's nothing he can really do uh, because his opponent can, can just easily swing over uh, what he's staring down. He doesn't have to summon anymore, uh, so Camilla's not going to get her effect. Yep. Going for the Smashers to... Yeah, I mean, either one of them at this point. And, yeah. Eris 1 sees the writing on the wall and knows he can't come back from that. Overall, I think that was a good duel. I don't think uh, Eris 1 really played anything wrong there. I, I think he did his best. Runic not seeing Fountain the entire time, that's just, that's that's game over. Now, yeah, not being able to go into uh, Runic Fang's little Fox Wolf guy here uh, to pull it out of the grave, left him with one in deck that he just he just could not access, uh, staring down that much negation. I think Sprite did a really good job to keep in control under with Red. Uh, overall, this is a f both builds, neither of them look different than anything I've seen, so fairly standard builds, overall good match. Uh, thank you all for stopping by and watching me today. And I hope to see you again soon. Out. Thank you for watching. Try some of these other great duels. If you like what you saw, give us a like and subscribe.